Hi there guys, welcome to another fantastic issue of Retro Gamer Magazine. I'm Darren Jones. And I'm Juice Sleep. And let's do this, I guess. So we'll quickly show you the cover, just so you know what to look out for in the shots. There you go, Lara Croft. You may remember her from such games as Tomb Raider. And Tomb Raider 2. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider 3. Is, that, is it Tomb Raider 3 or is it Tomb Raider The Last Revelation? No, no. I think that was Tomb Raider 4. Oh, I didn't know. There's been there's there's uh, been a lot of Tomb Raider games. Do you want to talk about this? Looks good. It's Tanglewood, but I don't really know much about it. This so. is the one I keep on calling Tangled, isn't it? Tangled, yeah, not not, <laughs> not the Disney film with the hair. It does kind of look like it could be from a Disney film. Yeah, in I term, mean, in terms of like the really cute pixel graphics and that, but um, we we should fill you in. Basically, it's a Kickstarter. It did really successful. It's going to come out on a physical copy of the Mega Drive, which I'm really excited about because I love the Mega Drive and physical versions. Our main feature, Tomb Raider, and uh, more Tomb Raider. It goes on forever more Tomb and Raider. ever. It's like the Andrex of our magazine features, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely more massive. Tomb, more Tomb Raider, and then it stops. Yeah, it stops. To tie in with that, you can see the insane developer access we've got. Now, that doesn't mean that the developers are insane. It just means that we've got absolutely amazing access. So we've had a few readers ask about that, and we just want to clear it up. None of the developers that we spoke to are insane. We couldn't speak to Toby Guard. We did contact him a number of times, but obviously because of his relationship with Tomb Raider, yeah. he just doesn't want to talk about it, which is fair if enough. If you don't want to talk about something, you just don't want to. Luckily, though, a long, 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 long time ago, when um, Retro Game was first in its infancy, I yeah. did manage to get an interview with him. And for whatever reason, I ended up um, giving it to Games TM. I don't know why. There might have been money involved. So basically, Barbarian, um, absolutely fantastic game. Um, unusual at the time because in the 80s, everybody was obsessed with karate games. You had Where of the Exploding Fish, you had IK, IK Plus. Um, so to actually see something which was obviously more themed around Conan the Barbarian was quite unusual. And as you can see here... That is so gory. Like, yeah. look at those three pixels of bloody blood and that disembodied head. This was shit hot when shit hot. I was like a kid. Because <laughs> when did it come out? It came out... 87, so I would have been like 14. So yeah. to be able to do stuff like that was amazing. And once I worked out how to do it, I did it all the time. So moving on. Oh! <laughs> it was inevitable. It was inevitable, wasn't it? Moving on. So we've got Microsurgeon. I know I'm notoriously not a fan of some 8-bit games, but this one I like because it's just idiosyncratic and so unique looking that, and like, it's basically Fantastic Voyage in a game almost. Isn't yeah, it? and I think I think it's one of those classic examples where they kind of knew that they that the technology wasn't really there for them to do what they did, but they yeah. just dug their heels in and they just bloody did it anyway, and yeah. it works. You can see the coder with the reference picture here, just going, All right, how what's the human body look like? Yes, no, it's it's, it's a really interesting game. Um, oh, vertical spread. Vertical spread. And um, yep. an ultimate guide. An ultimate guide to Cabal, no less. I wouldn't say it's the first of these types of games, but I, I, I wouldn't want to stake my life on that. And <laughs> I'm not a better man. But it's really cool. So you can like run and run backwards and forwards across the bottom of the screen, and then when you press the fire button, you can then move a cursor move around and just yeah. shoot everything. And this was quite cool at the time because pretty much everything in it was um, destructible. As always, we've obviously spoken to coders, looked at all the different conversions, and um, it's a pretty good job. Now, Solaris is quite a good Atari 20, 20 how do you say it? 2600? 2600, yeah. Yeah, right? I, yeah, I always say 2600. Yeah. I mean, we always get criticised because BCS, obviously it was known as a PCS, but, you know, hey, this is, this is how we do things. <laughs> It's a really fast-paced shooter. It does a lot of things which a lot of people didn't think were really possible in the Atari 2600. And um, we followed that up with a few other titles as well. Um, I mean, I've got to be honest, I've not really heard any of these games. I've heard kind of Defender of... 2. Well, yeah, Defender yeah. 2, but in terms of like, I mean, Bobby is going home. What's he going home to? Does anyone care? Why Frankenstein's more... But this is the thing, though, isn't it? Uh, most, most games in the 80s, yeah. though, just had utterly crap. Names. Horace, I mean, I'm looking at you, man. You know, I, Leave yeah. Leave Horace alone. <laughs> Fuck Horace. What? I, 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 <laughs> Mo moving on, um, I did ask Sam why he went with a super pink thing for for this design, and I think it's, it's because... the design of the cabinet. Isn't it? Bec oh, of course, I thought it was the aliens, didn't uh, I? This ended up selling really well for Atari, didn't it? Because it, it kind of like came out around about the same time as X-Files and everything, so there was a lot of, yeah, there was a lot of love for sci-fi. It's like a gun game, and it's like Atari's foray into gun game, and it's designed by Mark, Mark Halley, who worked on Star Wars, worked yeah. on it as well. and at the end of the day, shooting things is fun. Yeah. Something we've never covered in the mag before, I mean, 
What is that? So if, if, if you don't know, this is basically um, Sega's answer to the NES. Over here, we obviously know it as the Master System, but there was actually several iterations before that, and this is the very first one, called the SG-1000. It did surprisingly well, actually, in its first few months. Yeah, I mean... the it, Famicom, it was like neck and neck in terms of like game releases and sales. And then it just um, it just couldn't really compete with the um, with the access that Nintendo had with regards to publishers. But it's, it's yeah. really cool, and we've, um, we've even managed to get hold of Yu Suzuki, who made his first game on the system so yep. so that's pretty sweet if you don't know already Shenmue 3 is currently being made and um, check out his Kickstarter where you can basically do a back end because we love you Suzuki and yeah, we want to give him as much these. so one of the things that we were definitely not going to do with this next feature is we're not going to do any egg puns whatsoever because this is um, Blitz Game Studios um, I'm keeping an eye on you like, yeah 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 no no promise so I, w I will not do any I because I um, so much egg puns Dizzy and Horace. Like, you, you've got a real potty mouth today, haven't you? You can bleep me out with dig dug <laughs> noises if you want, like, but good God, I've seen so much. I have seen. So this is a maze game. It's amazing. Oh, no egg puns, but maze puns. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, this, but this is the double standards that I have to work with. You don't see half the stuff that happens off camera, and. Is he you? It's, it's, it's just getting really difficult. So Diablo, a franchise about hitting monsters really hard. And it's one that I like because I like hitting monsters really hard. And you can collect a bunch of loot, which you also like, yeah? I like free stuff, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I like it when I can hit something, something magically appears, I press a button and it goes in my pocket. That's free. It's brilliant. <laughs> when I was a youngster, I used to play Dungeons and Dragons a lot, and there's obviously a lot of similarities with it. It's um, it's pretty light in story, but it's it's where it's well crafted. They've always enhanced them. So the first Diablo was really cool. The second one I wasn't until recently. The servers only just turned off, or they're still on, and they've amended them. Um, but it was a massive, yeah. massive, massive success. So mercenary. We'd love to actually do an interview, but unfortunately Paul Wokes doesn't want to talk. Apologies if you saw the front cover and you were like, oh my god, that's a make it anniversary, this is amazing. But um, it's not. Pokemon Sun and Moon. Pokemon. I wanna be... I haven't got a board with me this time. Right now, is it, is it Pokemon or Pokemon? Because I call it Pokemon. I, think, I mean, I, I don't yeah. care. I just like the fact that I'm I, winding the hell out of my wife I and based it, by saying something. I think in like the TV show, which is where I got my pronunciation from it, they say Pokemon and Pokemon. Uh, right, and right, the right. early ones, I think. Pokemon. Pokemon. Hmm. This to me is a game which is completely bereft of ideas. I mean, you've got a seal <laughs> with a clown nose. You've got a cat, and this is clearly an owl. I I don't think it's a tawny owl because it's probably a little. There's probably a little too much white hair. But this is this this does now look like they're just getting to a stage where they're just looking at stuff and saying it's a Pokemon. The last one, they literally had a set of keys as the Pokemon, which is scraping the power, right? Now this is like the best Pokemon I've played wow. since Gold and Silver and even like the original Generation 1 Pokemon you can see a Raichu there if you know what that is. Yeah, yeah, I know what that it's is. That's now. the one that no. Pikachu turns into. Yeah, that's right. like obviously see, got I a know, picture. I know my Pokemon. So um, Homebrew as well, obviously lots going on in the Homebrew. With, there's, um, there's been a big Game Boy Jam at the moment it's and nice um, ah! more, more luck. Ah! Yeah. No, not him. Make it stop, make it stop. <laughs> it's, it's all right. Too you're much. Gonna, you're, you're gonna be okay, mate. Spin in the mag, too much. Um, the mailbag and um, next month. So, we've got some exciting stuff. Yeah. And we've obviously, in standard tradition, we've got some stuff which won't be an issue. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Gauntlet 2. That's, that's definitely in. That's definitely in. Yeah. The Legacy of Resident Evil. Definitely. That's definitely in. Um, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Suda 51, Dreamcast Light Gun, The <laughs> Rise of... The, oh, that won't be in. The, the Redacted. <laughs> Pan, yeah. Panzer Dragoon, yeah. The History of Match Day, Hunchback. Yeah. Redacted. <laughs> Super Nintendo, uh, top 10 hits and much more. So um, that'll be on sale 26th of January. Some of you won't know this, but this has actually been the most successful year Retro Gamer has ever had in terms of our sales have just been going woo, which yeah. is really good. <laughs> We've obviously picked up a lot of new readers. Um, we've had a lot of um, a lot more letters than usual saying how they love the mag, saying how they could improve the mag. And ultimately, you know, we loved making this magazine and we couldn't do it without you guys. So thanks ever so much. Yeah. Have a brilliant Christmas. Although technically you've had a brilliant Christmas because... Had a brilliant this... Christmas. And um, yeah, we'll see you in 2017, guys. Take care, everyone. Yeah, that's all right.
Ja, 